in the globalized job market, young people instinctively leave the less stimulating and creative environments for those that have a spark to them. How did we lose our spark as a nation? We have a political economy marked by dependence on easy options and easy wealth. Like personal dependencies, these bad habits provide temporary comfort but discourage the growth of creativity and resilience. I mentioned our dependence on low-cost foreign labour. The other dependence is something I played a part in making it possible. This is a story I want to leave you with to ponder in your deliberations today. Our nation is blessed with a modest quantity of oil reserves. As a young nation coming to terms with its natural bounty in the early 70s, our primary thought was to conserve that oil. That is why when Petronas was formed, we instituted the Petroleum Development Council. Its function was to advise the Prime Minister on how to conserve that oil and use it judiciously for national development. We knew our reserves would not last long. We saw our oil reserves as an unearned beauty bounty that would provide the money for modernization and technology. We saw our oil within a development, developmental perspective. Our struggle then was to make the leap from an economy based on commodities and low-cost assembly and manufacture to a more diverse economy based on high-income jobs. Aware that we had an insufficient tax base to make the capital investments needed to make the leap, we planned to apply oil royalties to what you would call today strategic investments in human capital. Whatever money left after making cash payments, allocations for development funds, etc., was to be placed in what was to be a heritage fund for the future. The heritage fund was for education and social enrichment. In working out the distribution of oil between the states who had sovereign rights over it and the federal government, we were guided by concerns for equity between all Malaysians, a concern to develop the poorer states who also happened to be the oil-rich states, and a concern for intergenerational equity. That oil was for special development purposes, and it was not just meant for our generation. Sabah and Sarawak joined Malaya to form Malaysia because of the promise of development funds. Yet today, despite being their massive resources, they are some of our poorest states. Instead of being our ace up the sleeve, however, our oil wealth became in effect a swag of money used to fund the government's operational expenditure, to bail out failing companies, buy arms, build grandiose cities amidst cleared palm oil estates. Instead of helping eradicate poverty, in the poorer states, our oil wealth came to be channeled into our political and politically linked class. Instead of being the patrimony of all Malaysians and for our children, it is used as a giant slush fund that has propped up authoritarian rule, eroded constitutional democracy, and corrupted our entire political and business class. Our oil receipts, instead of being applied in the manner we planned upon the formation of Petronas, that is, according to its original developmental purpose, became a fund for the whims and fancy of whoever ran the country without any accountability. The oil that was meant to spur our transition to a more humane, educated society has instead become a narcotic that provides quick economic quick fixes 
and hollow symbols such as the Petronas Towers. Our oil wealth was meant to help us foster Malaysians capable of building the Twin Towers, then hire foreigners to build them, a practice in which we preceded Dubai. I would rather have good government than grand government buildings filled with a demoralized and politicized civil service. It is no wonder that we are no longer productive, no longer using our ingenuity to devise ways to improve ourselves and leap forward. Malaysia now is now an oil-cursed country. We managed to arrive at this despite not having a lot of oil. When I helped form Petronas in 1974, I did not realize I would see the day when I wished we had even less of it. I leave you with a grim story, my young friends, as a reference point. I encourage you to pick up again the course of development with the courage, ingenuity and creativity that earlier generations of Malaysians took to their task. I urge you to understand the political and constitutional rebuilding that we need to undergo as the necessary foundation for a more productive and creative society. Thank you.